here's a hard TPA question from the Data Insights section. How hard is it, you ask? Well, this is at the 655 plus level, so hard enough. Very poor accuracy on this one. Now, there could be multiple reasons. There could be conceptual gaps because you'll see what concept is tested here. Or it could just be about, you know, fear of the unknown, not really knowing how to deal with a data insights question or TPA to be specific. So let's solve this together and keep learning as you see me doing things, okay? First step on any question you do is to understand what is given. Right now on your screen here is the given part. After this, I'm going to show you what is being asked. In fact, when you solve a question, always train your eye to only look at the given first, then worry about what's asked. Because otherwise, you will be overwhelmed with information and I don't want you to be intimidated. Let's read this together. This says, according to a prominent investment advisor, company X has... What does it have? 50% chance of posting a profit in the coming year. So 50% chance, uh, which means it's 50-50, either you will make it or you won't make it. It's an equal likelihood for company X. And then they're talking about another company, company Y, which has a 60% chance of posting a profit. So it's profit for both of them. Now, based on this data, I can see that, you know, because this 60 is greater than 50, company Y is more likely to post a profit in the coming year than company. X. Based on whatever research they've done, we don't have to worry about that. Actually, there's not much I can do here. I can see what are the chances of not posting a profit, you know, 50% here and 40% here. But I won't do extra work till my question calls for it. So I'm going to go and see what the question is really asking. So let's go here. Oh, now this is pretty lengthy. When the given information was really small, the statement here is quite a mouthful. Let's read this nicely. Okay, so it says, select for least probability for both. What is this? It's actually talking about the first column header. Select for this one, what? Select what? The language is a little tricky, so read it carefully. Select for this one, the least probability compatible with the probabilities provided by the investment advisor. It's really just saying, you know, go with the values given in the question. Okay, so compatible with this, select the least probability that both company X and Y will post a profit in the coming year. Now that I've read the question, I know the concept being tested is probability. And this could be one reason that so many people faltered on this one. It is generally a concept not many people are comfortable with. But be calm about this. It's going to happen. So I really have two events here. One is company A posting a profit. The other is company B. Okay, sorry. They were called X and Y, I believe. So company X posting a profit and company Y posting a profit. These are the two events. Now the question is saying the probability of both of these things happening. So there's an and in between. And not only do I need to find the probability of this, I can't get an exact value. That's why it's saying, tell me what is the least possible value that this can take. What's the least possible probability? And that answer I'm going to fill in here in the first column. Okay? And there are values here, of course, that I have to choose from. I'll read further and then it tells us about what to do for the second column. Now, select for greatest probability for both, which is your second column header. It's telling you select for this one, what? Select what? So we'll read further. Select this, the greatest probability compatible with everything that both of them will post a profit. You notice they're actually talking about the same thing both ways. Both XP and yp i essentially just want to find the least possible value of this and the greatest possible value of this. i am taking least and greatest of the same probability so thankfully i don't have to calculate two different probabilities it's one thing now that i understand the question i'm going to work hard and try to find this and part this intersection okay of course, all of the information I have is here in the question. So I'm going to come here and think about it. But I know what to now do. I'm very clear about that. I need to simply see probability of X profit and Y profit. 
and I want to see least and greatest both for this, okay? So how do you talk about an intersection? And then there's probability. If you're conceptually solid, this should strike you as, you know, maybe creating a Venn diagram representing the situation or simply knowing how the AND formula works. But visualizing this, making the Venn diagram will really make this easy. So let's do that. Now I have company X with its 50% chance. So this is company X, the circle that represents it. And this circle has a size of 50%. Okay. Obviously, the total probability is always 100%. So that's like your universal set. Now there's company Y and that has a 60% chance. Now right now I don't know the overlap but I'm just making them this way. This is 60%. Now it is this section here, the both section that I'm interested in. What is the least? What is the greatest for this part? Okay. Now think about the least first. For this part to be the least, I really want to have these circles as far apart as possible. That's when the overlap will be minimal. Is it possible that I have both of them completely disjoint? Think about that. Why? Because if I have that, then 50 plus 60 is 110%. How can 110% be contained within 100%? That's not possible, which means some overlap has to be there. At the least, how much? only so that that extra over 100 does not happen right so 50 plus 60 was giving you 110 the extra i was getting was just the 10 right that is the bare minimum overlap that there has to be so i have really managed to find the least overlap there is going to be 10 percent chance that both of them post profit okay now similarly let's think about greatest so greatest is going to be when there is maximum overlap between the circles. When will that be? Let me try to put one circle completely within another. Is that possible? Let's see. So let me draw this again. Uh, which circle can go into which one? Obviously the smaller one can go into the bigger one. So X can go into Y. If I represent it that way, there's this 50 inside and then there is 60 outside. It is possible really. The rest of the 40% will be here on the outside. And therefore, the greatest overlap is when one of the circles, the X circle really, completely goes into Y. And therefore, I also have the answer for the second part now. My greatest is 50%. And I'm done. I'm simply going to go and mark the answer now. Let's go to our table. Okay, perfect. Where is the least greatest value? Hmm, least was 10. Greatest was 50. And we are done. Nothing remained in the question once you completely understood what was to be done. Of course, this is a question where complete conceptual clarity is a must. There is no way that you cannot know probability, you know, not know anything about Venn diagrams and you might take too much time at the very least, even if you get this correct. Okay, so I hope this efficient approach made sense to you reading things piece by piece, assimilating them as we go, deciding on your approach before you jump into data, because otherwise numbers can confuse. That's it.